Okay, this video is to show you how to do the second or medium level of the DC Note Equations tutorial. So again, you'd usually want to start by showing an example. And here it will, as it did on the easy level, it will show you the color-coded currents leaving each node, which are the basis for the KCL equations. But notice the new thing here is that we have a voltage constraint equation Anytime a voltage source is present, as it is on this level, that's going to actually constrain the difference between, in this case, V2 and V1. And so that's going to give us a new type of equation. Um, also, another thing is that we're asking for a dissipated power rather than just a voltage or a current. And that requires using the formula for power, which is generally the difference in voltage squared divided by the resistance for the power dissipated in a resistor. So that's just an example. And you can get explanations of constraint equations here, if you like. Um, might be worth looking at, and also you can get a detailed explanation of each KCL equation if you want that. Um, so that's very detailed. And then you can go to the next one, and then you can explain that one if you like. Um, so you can explain all of these, and it'll cycle through, and it's showing, the, in this case, five currents leaving um, this particular uh, node, in this case, node three, and that's why we have five terms in the equation. And notice we did not combine the two current sources together. These must be written as separate terms, typically, in the program. OK, and that's the example. So now let's work a problem at the medium level. OK, so the first thing, it's not going to make you find nodes now, because hopefully you have the hang of that from the first level. Um, so what you will need to do, however, is to place the ground, as always. Um, when there's a voltage source present, it's usually a good idea to connect that voltage source to ground. So I'm going to put my ground right here, so it's connected to the voltage source. If I don't do that, I'm going to have to use a concept that we haven't really learned yet, which is involves uh, something called supernodes. So I'm going to put it here, and if I tried to put it over here, for example, it would probably warn me that that wasn't maybe a very good idea, um, and so it's better to put it actually over here. Or I could have put it up here too, but this is connected to more things, so that's probably a better place to put it. OK, so having chosen the ground now, <clears throat> now I need to write the different equations. Um, as always, since you're in nodal analysis, it doesn't have you pick the analysis method. That's pre-selected for you as nodal analysis. Um, generally, it's recommending here that you start out with the simpler equations first, in case you know if you um, do those long KCL equations um, and then make some mistakes on the simple equations, then you're going to lose credit and you won't get credit for doing all the longer equations. So it makes more sense really to do the simple ones first. Um, so let's do the voltage constraint equations first, because they're generally pretty simple. Um, so that would basically be for each voltage source, constrains a difference in voltages in the circuit. So the, basically the four volt source is, since this is the reference node, the black one, it's constraining the value of V4 relative to the reference node. So it's just going to give us a value of V4, not a difference of voltages, as would more typically be the case. Um, and that's going to be equal to some fixed voltage, because this is a, an independent voltage source. So it's just going to be that value of voltage. And it's going to be 4 volts. Um, however, it's actually going to make V4 equal to negative 4 volts, if you think about it, because that's the negative sign, or negative side, rather, of the voltage source that's connected to that node. So um, V4 is going to be negative 4 volts, and that's our constraint equation. Um, we can check that. And now it's going to give me some hints about what's written and what still needs to be written. So we've done our, our one constraint equation, because there's only one voltage source in this circuit, unlike the first level, of course, where we didn't have any voltage sources. Um, but I do need to write KCL equations for each node or supernode, which supernodes don't apply yet, um, since I picked the ground the way I did and the SOT variable equation. So the SOT variable equations are generally simpler, so let's do those before we tackle the KCL equations, just in case we make a bunch of mistakes, and then we won't waste time writing the, the difficult KCL equations. So let's choose the SOT voltage, for example. That's pretty simple. V0 is going to be equal to what? So V0 is right here. And so that's going to be basically um, the difference between ground and V2. So since there's only one non-zero voltage there, that would be V2. Um, except that the minus sign is on V2, the plus sign is on ground, so that's actually going to be minus V2. Or we could put the minus sign over here instead, but of course not both, because that would be incorrect. Um, so that's, and, and you could also write it as V0 plus V2 equals 0 if you wanted to do that. That will be accepted as a correct equation, or various other permutations of that. 
Okay, so we've got that SOT variable. Now let's do the SOT power. Um, and this is a branch power, of course, as powers always are. And now it's notifying us that we actually have three pallets of terms there, which we might need, depending on the particular case. Um, so we have the dissipated power in the 6 ohm is equal to what? Well, in nodal analysis, um, we know the node voltages when we're done. So basically, we can just use a difference of node voltages divided by the resistance. It would be the easy thing to get that power on that 6 ohm resistance. Actually, I take that back because one end is tied to ground. So we don't want that term. So I'll just drag that out. And instead, I really just need one voltage. So I'll use this term instead. And so that's going to be, um, let's see, that's going to be V3 squared divided by now the resistance, which is 6 ohms. The standard formula for power is V squared over R, or I squared R. But in nodal analysis, we're typically dealing with voltages rather than currents. Um, now, the dissipated power is always positive. Um, so there, we don't have to worry about sign conventions. It's just always going to be positive. OK, so that's correct. And we've survived all that without making uh, too many mistakes. So now it's a good time to probably go back and do the KCL equations. And um, and by the way, on that SOT power, um, you know, you did have additional uh, term types available here just to show you that. Now, we didn't need them in this problem, but sometimes you will need those. So that's what this uh, these radio buttons here highlighted in yellow were for, is to access all the terms that wouldn't really fit on a single uh, screen. OK, so let's go back to the KCL equations. Um, KCL is the basis of nodal analysis, so we nearly always need to write KCL equations. Um, so we again have to pick um, each node and write a KCL equation for that. So let's, uh, now the trick, however, is if we wanted to do it for node 4, we could certainly write an equation for the current leaving through the 4 ohm resistor. But what is the current through a voltage source? Well, if you remember, it's whatever it needs to be, meaning that we have no way of knowing that until we've actually solved the entire problem. So we cannot write a KCL equation for node 4 here because it's connected to a voltage source. So that's the one node where we don't write a voltage, uh, sorry, we don't write a KCL equation, but we instead have the voltage constraint equation, which basically takes its place so that we'll still have enough equations to solve the problem. Now node 3, on the other hand, we can write it because there it's just resistors connected. We don't have a voltage source connected to that. So let's do that, and we have basically um, this is a resistor connected to two non-reference nodes, as is this one. So we need another term like that. And then the third one is connected to the reference node, or the ground. And so there's just one voltage involved there. So we need this term instead. Um, and then all that sums to 0. Um, and again, you could rearrange this equation in various ways, but this is probably just the way I like to do it. OK, so we'll have V3 minus uh, V1 divided by 1 ohms, that's going to be the current down through this resistor. Okay, That's the driving voltage is V3 minus V1, and it makes the current go in that direction according to the normal sign convention. The uh, current up through the 4 ohm resistor is going to be V3 minus V4 divided by the 4 ohms. And notice that all the terms typically um, are going to uh, have the V3, which is the a node for which we're writing this KCL equation with a plus sign. That's kind of a, a hint. Um, so here we're going to have V3 divided by 6 ohms. It's not going to have a minus sign because it's the coefficient of V3. And because we're dealing with currents that are leaving. Now, if you wanted to write currents that are entering, then it would be the opposite. And so we'd have to take the negative of all these terms. Um, I like to write it for the currents leaving, but it's an arbitrary choice, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it will accept it either way, as long as you do it consistently. People sometimes tell me, oh, it won't let me do it the way I like to do it. And the problem isn't that a student is doing it a different valid way. It's that they're doing it in a way that's actually incorrect. And so this will not mark you wrong if you're doing it correctly, um, unless you combine, for example, uh, terms for two different current sources. Then it would mark you incorrect. That's the one thing you have to be careful about. But algebraically, if you're correct, it's going to mark you correct. And this is a very well-tested part of the program. So. Um, it's very unlikely to make an error. OK, so we'll check that equation. And now we'll write uh, a similar equation. So we did node 3, so let's do one for node 1. And there we have a uh, resistor that's connected not to ground. This one is connected to ground, so that would be this type of term. And finally, a current source, which is independent, so we need this type. 
and all that's equal to zero. Those are the three currents exiting the node V1. So now um, for this current up through the one ohm, we would have V1 minus V3 divided by one ohm. The current up through the five ohm would be simply V1 minus zero, which we don't of course have to show, divided by five ohms. And then the current leaving here, well, that seven amp current is actually entering so it's going to have a minus sign when we add the leaving currents. And again, I could change the signs of all three of these terms, but I would have to do all three, of course, to still be correct. Okay, so that is correct. And now I have to write one for node two as the last remaining non-reference node. Remember, I don't write a KCL equation for the reference node because that would just be a linear combination of the other equations, and there's no point in doing that. And Circuit Tutor will not support um, doing that, in fact, so don't don't try to do that. Okay, um, so now I have two current source terms, so I need this term and this term. Um, one thing you don't want to do is to combine those, even though you could numerically, and it would still be algebraically correct, um, we want to see a separate term for each circuit element, just as in the uh, single node pair single loop tutorial. So that's one thing you would not want to combine those, um, because it would be marked wrong, even though algebraically it might be correct. Then we have the current up through the two ohm, so we, that's connected to ground, so we need this term equals to zero. And so now the seven amp is indeed leaving, so that's positive. The one amp is also leaving, so that's, I'm sorry, one amp is also leaving. And then we have um, V2 minus the zero um, divided by the two ohms. That's the current leaving up here through the two ohm. So that would be the equation, and that is marked correct. Now I have all my equations completed, so now I just Click no more equations when I'm done. And it, tell me, it tells me that I have completed that level. And I can, of course, view a detailed explanation if I'm not sure about how I got those equations um, or I just want to reinforce my knowledge, then I can click yes for a detailed explanation, which would be similar to what you would see if this problem was an example. And remember, the examples are exactly like the problems that you're required to work. There is no difficulty. I'm sorry, no difference in the, um, the uh, nature of the examples. Okay, so that's it for the second level. Thank you.